How do you close the digital divide? How do you make sure that every person and every device that wants to connect to the internet can? Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North, still at Futures, from here with Scott from the Helium Foundation. Why don't you give us your 30 seconds introduction? Who do you do and who do you work for? Yeah, so Scott CEO from Helium Foundation. So we're the stewards for the Helium Network. Helium Network has been around since 2019. So five-year-old, we build wireless networks using crypto as an incentive model. So why wireless networks? What are we actually solving for? So think about the real world of how do you close the digital divide? How do you make sure that every person and every device that wants to connect to the internet can? And historically, over you know, the last you know, several decades, that's been built from a top-down centralized model. So in the U.S., which is where we're based, you know, whether that's AT&T or Verizon or here in Canada, a company like Rogers, it is spending billions of dollars every year on towers and radios to make sure that their subscribers can be connected. And that leaves pockets of dead space in cities like Toronto. It leaves dead space in rural areas. Uh, supply lines. So how do you think about filling those gaps and creating wireless coverage for all? You need a way to do that from the ground up and that's what Helium is doing. Interesting. So what are some of the major pain points right now beyond what you just explained or maybe you could expand a little bit? Yeah. What are you solving for basically? Yeah. So for us, you know, when the network started off, it was actually, it was not a blockchain project from the get-go. It was all around solving for so internet things, IOT. You've got sensors around the world. There's always this promise of we can have better real world data. I want to know about goods in transport. Where are they? I want to know the temperature of these things of, you know, we've got smart agriculture. I want to know about the soil. I want to know about moisture. Um, smart city solutions. I want to know about air quality. I want to understand uh, flood detection systems. And building those types of networks has historically been very difficult from an economics perspective. So Helium was built on the idea of how do you create those networks? And in around 2018, 2019, it was doing this with a community incentivized model using crypto to reward people for building this network, that was really what we were solving for. And it has, the, the model has been proven at this point of, you've got major cities that are using the Ethereum network for flood detection systems, for air quality monitoring, for supply chain and goods and transit. So we started with IoT and now in the last couple of years, we took that same model and are building out to create a mobile network for cell phones. So again, the idea of how do I have better connectivity in my home at a cafe, historically, you got to wait for a telco like a Rogers to show up and put up a tower and send out a person. Imagine if a cafe owner could just put up a small piece of hardware that was user-friendly, easy to install, and voila, now they have connectivity in their cafe. It's good for their business. It's good for a homeowner. And for municipalities, they want to be able to provide their constituents better connectivity. It's an open network that anybody can participate, anybody can get, get rewarded, and we're solving for that issue of how do you close the digital divide? You partially answer the question yeah or cued my question perhaps sure around the fact that you're talking about building physical infrastructure yeah talk about cables and wires and yeah. and devices but that are i imagine pretty small form factor that like you said any coffee shop yeah can buy right is that is that what it is really yeah so it's you know i think that is it how does it like if i was the client like what, what am i buying yeah and i think that's one of the things that like helium was very successful in the early days of it's kind of i get yeah, consumerized mining that you know years ago i want to run a bitcoin or ethereum rig you have to be a little technically savvy to do that. With Helium, you're buying something that looks like a Wi-Fi access point. It's a you know small piece of hardware that you know for a few hundred dollars with a very simple front end interface of, from of I want to put this thing up and you know just plug it into your home internet, plug it in some other form of uh, you know backhaul of connectivity, and now you're creating coverage with something that's very easy to interact. So building that supply, like connect to satellites or so there's different ways. So it's, think about it as like last mile coverage. So you've got your home internet, you basically plug it into that, and I've created a wireless coverage for your neighborhood. A land. So yeah, exactly. So is it connected to home internet? Some people use it if you're connected to an old 3G phone for some of the more rural use cases. Your neighbor might be using your internet. Yeah, or you can use it you know, for satellite uh, connectivity. So there's a lot of different ways of kind of how you bring that connectivity in and talk back to internet core. But how are you creating wireless coverage for the area? That's what Helium solves for. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Do you interact with the actual telcos uh, in any parts of the world? Yeah, so one of the ways that Helium is really uh, seeing a lot of growth and success right now is um, how are we solving for this for legacy telco, not just for new challenges of like what, what Helium is doing. Of So for a Rogers or for a, a Verizon or a Telefonica is one of the um, partners of the network is what's called carrier offload. So if you're a subscriber for a traditional wireless network like, um, like Rogers, you very often, you don't realize that when you're in the airport, 
you're not necessarily on Rogers' network, you're on somebody else's network that Rogers is rolling into and they're paying that other network for access. So that's what's happening with Helium is we are now transferring uh, in the last, I think, like 30 days, it's like over five terabytes worth of data for traditional wireless carriers. Okay. So it's the idea of they can use this. It is more cost effective for them to roam into Helium than paying some of these other tower operators. So you're benefiting traditional wireless. You're creating space for new challenges like Helium Mobile, which is a you know, low cost cell, uh, cell phone carrier. And that competition opens up of anybody can build a carrier on a community built network like Helium now. So everybody was the integration of uh, traditional telecommunications with, let's call it blockchain telecommunications. Yeah, in the future. I mean, is it the incumbents are eventually going to be hiring, uh, sorry, are going to be uh, lying out, uh, you know, some of the, you know, uh, innovators like, like yourselves? Uh, and it'll all sort of be integrated or do you, yeah. Well, I think it's ultimately, you know, it is this marriage of, so again, like what is, you know, cell phone carrier is, it's all, again, it's that top down model of it's high CapEx, billions of dollars a year spend on towers and operators, and they deploy where they have the most traffic. Okay. You have to marry that with a bottoms up model, which is people who have the, that localized comprehension and the understanding and the empathy to my cafe doesn't have coverage. My home has really terrible wireless coverage. My farm needs better access so I can put in all these little moisture like kind of detectors. And having that context locally, you have to be able to have an incentive system that I can build wireless from the ground up. So the idea that how do we get to that wireless for all? It's carrier networks plus community networks working together to provide that. And your value comes to the community through a token model. And carriers benefit because they still own the customers and stay. They are kind of still like running that front end model. But ultimately, it's those two things have to work together so the whole world can be covered efficiently. What's the next level of innovation in the coming, let's say, five or 10 years? What do you think will happen but just can't happen right now because these things just take time? Basically? Yeah. So I think there's an emerging narrative in, in Deepin right now, which, you know, the decentralized physical infrastructure networks. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but you think about so less of the finance side of crypto and more about utility networks. So wireless, edge compute, energy and coordinating solar, all of these things require physical hardware and a physical location. So how do you create some of the composability where if I have, you know, commercial real estate somewhere, you know, the, I can use that. That's an asset. So I can provide wireless coverage. I can also contribute to the power grid. I can also help around edge compute. So using hardware in a physical space that you, you can be multi-mining, you can be providing multiple services. So I think you're going to see this narrative continue to evolve and be one of the killer cases of crypto of all of this community built utility networks is going to continue to grow. It's going to benefit the legacy enterprise. And you're going to see a lot more value accruing to these community networks overall. So when we think about what are these human scale applications looking for, it's community built networks like Helium. How do you create wireless for all? How do you create better energy networks? I think you're going to see D-PIN as a subsector of crypto really thriving in the next several years. Fascinating. Yeah. In the next episode of this interview, we'll talk about D-PIN. Sounds <laughs> good. Thank you very much, Scott.